So let's talk about platform, isolated or attached. What are the distribution of facies on those platforms? Can we predict it? Is it easy or is there more complexity really than the models that we have predict? Well, let's find out. That's right, welcome to Bali, a beautiful island in Indonesia. Not only did I have fantastic Indonesian student in my career, I also had the privilege to go and dive on the reef here. This is why I'm bringing you to this beautiful island to talk about reef and isolated platforms. So from starting in the swimming pool where I had my first swim, diving all the way to the reef, I had a chance to look at these modern systems. So what we will do in this class is we'll first look at the facies model for the rimmed platform. And then from there, we'll take it to the actual modern platforms that we know, the Bahamas, the, the Belize platform, and the Great Barrier Reef. And we will discuss how well or how poorly this model applies and how complex situations really are. So this is all about modern environment, but it applies, of course, to previous or, or ancient carbonate systems. So let's start with this facies model. So when you look at the facies model for modern rim platform, you see that the reef, of course, is a dominant feature. And we know that the reef has a function, which is to break wave energy. So we can look at the four reef, what comes before the reef, so towards the, the basin. And there we have the slope as an environment and the basin as another environment. Now, both of these environments are below the fair weather wave base. In the basin, we expect to have shale and pelagic limestone and the dominant texture, because we're in such a protected environment below fair weather and, and even below storm wave base, the dominant texture, the dominant texture are mudstones. The slope is a bit more complicated because we have a lot of resedimented carbonates coming from the reef where the wave action is so strong. And so the type of facies that you can expect are grainstone, rutstone, floatstone, and even some waxstone, but mudstone are, are less common, although not impossible, of course. Now, beyond the reef and including the reef, this is known as the carbonate rimmed shelf itself. The reef is the area of maximum energy. So that's maximum wave energy, as we've already um, discussed. So what you can expect at this location are reefs and carbonate sand bodies, so shoals and things like this. And in terms of fabric, expect bound stones, that's the reef itself, or grain stones, so very coarse fabric that indicate this high energy as we've discussed when we looked at the Dunham classification. Then behind the reef, we're in a protected environment. And there we have the lagoon and tidal flat carbonates, and the dominant textures would be waxstone, mudstone, etc. There's also an area that is in, in the tidally influenced uh, zone, but can be exposed at time. This is known as the subaerial area or the supratidal carbonates, and there typically you'd expect mudstone, so very, very fine lithologies that are deposited at high tide. So let's look now at how this simple model can apply to modern system. And of course, we'll start first by looking at the Bahamas. So let's take a picture here of the Bahamas. So if you're not familiar with the Bahamas, we have two Bahamas, the Little Bahamas here in the north and the Great Bahamas here in the south. And you can see that part of the Bahamas is exposed. That's a high stand carbonate shelf that is now essentially the island where, where you can go and have a, a nice holiday. But you can also notice that there's a lot of shallow water banks around the Bahamas. And this is the area where the carbonates are being produced. So let's look at the Great Bahamas Bank and the type of sediment that we see there. So I'm showing you some work here from um, Steve Kazmarek, published in 2010. On the left here, you have satellite imagery of the Great Bahamas Bank. And on the right is his interpretation 
of the type of facies you can expect. And there's a number of things here that I find very striking. The first thing is we don't see a lot of bound stone. Okay, bound stone is in red, land is in black, so that's the exposed um, land. And the bound stone is in red. And, and there are reefs in the Bahamas, but in terms of volume, the reef does not represent a large volume of the, the modern Bahamas. So the reef serves a function, which is to generate sediment and also to protect the back of the, uh, of the system. But in the modern Bahamas, what we see is we're dominated by a lot of grainstone in the south of the Great Bahamas. So these could be, we'll see later, skeletal or oidal um, sands. And in the more protected area, we tend to have those pack stone that transition into wax stone. And then we go into tidal flats, which are actually, tidal flats are, are extremely fine grain. So the, the general model seems to apply, the model that we've seen. However, look at the distribution of those facies belt. They, they do not really show beautiful, well-ordered belts. We do have belts, like shape, but also we have a lot of patchiness in the distribution of the facies. And I think this is something that you really need to understand is that the models that we have are simplifications, the reality is always more complicated.